One bottle of wine per two guests? In what world is that enough? Hey there, simplifiers. Today I want to give you five tips for organizing a holiday meal. Regardless of how big your kitchen is, which as you can see, mine is not particularly big, or how many guests you're going to have, with a little bit of planning and organizing, you can host a dinner party, a holiday meal, or just a Sunday dinner. But before I jump into my tips, I want to remind you to hit that subscribe button below so that you don't miss any of the organizing and simplifying ideas I have for you and your family each week here. The first thing that I'm going to do is give you some numbers to figure out how much food you are going to need. Because you don't want to underbuy for sure, but you also don't necessarily want to be eating leftovers for like 10 days after you host your event. So I'm going to give you some basic ideas to help you figure out how much you're going to need for your gathering. First off, with appetizers, you're going to want two to three pieces of each type of appetizer per person that will be attending. Moving to the main dish, you are going to want six ounces of meat if you are serving one type or eight ounces per person if you are serving two. So not eight ounces of each thing, but say you're serving ham and turkey, you will want four ounces of ham and four ounces of turkey per person uh, when you go to buy those cuts of meat. Next up, let's talk about the side dishes that you'll be serving. And they're going to vary a little bit based on what you are serving. So if you're serving a starchy side, which is something like mashed potatoes or rice, you're going to want to figure in about five ounces per person. And this is bearing in mind that 16 ounces is a pound. So if you have four people, you're going to want to look for about a pound and a half of that starchy side versus vegetables, which you're going to want to look about four ounces per person. So if a recipe calls for a pound of green beans, you're going to want to think that it's going to serve four adult dinner guests. And don't worry if you're not getting all this down. I will put all of these numbers in the description below so that you can just copy and paste them or check back as you are planning your meal. So don't worry about scribbling everything down right now while I'm talking. If you're going to be serving pasta, figure on about two ounces of dried pasta per person. And for salad, think of one big heaping handful per person. So those bagged salads that you can find at the grocery store, maybe figure two to three servings on a bag per person. Finally, with the rolls or the bread that you're serving, you want to count about one and a half rolls or one and a half slices of bread per person that will be attending your dinner. Next up, let's talk drinks, which is my personal favorite part of any dinner party or holiday gathering. And you want to make sure that you have plenty on hand because a lot of times your liquor stores or your grocery stores will be closed on holidays. So you want to make sure that you have enough. There won't be that opportunity to run out and stock up. With wine, you figure on one bottle per two people that are attending. And for beer, you figure two bottles of beer for the first hour and then one bottle per person for each subsequent hour. So if you have four people coming over to your house and they're all beer drinkers, eight beers for the first hour, if they're going to be there for three hours, you want an additional 12 beers. So you want to make sure that you have like 20 to 24 beers on hand for those people. And then liquor, you can figure on 17 servings per bottle. Or if you're my husband, about four bourbon and Cokes per bottle of bourbon. For soft drinks, figure on three eight ounce servings per person that is there. And you can usually figure on about 10 servings per two liter that you have. So that just gives you a general idea about how many cans or two liters that you would need. The next step, or really the tip that is going to coincide with that first step is to set your menu. And when you sit down to figure this out, you want to kind of balance things out. You don't want too many starchy side dishes and not enough light vegetables. So as much as I would love a dinner that was filled with macaroni and cheese and mashed potatoes and rolls and corn casserole, that's going to get really heavy and really filling and it's going to make my guests feel pretty tired while they're eating it. So sit down and try to balance those heavier or starchier dishes out with something that's a little bit lighter. So have cheesy potatoes and then maybe have a salad with some sort of a vinaigrette on it to kind of balance that out. Or you could serve some 
some asparagus with a little bit of Parmesan sprinkled on top and balance that out with some garlic mashed potatoes. My next tip comes into play as you are figuring out this menu. If there is just too much that you don't feel like you can prepare at all or just items that you want made but you don't feel like is in your wheelhouse of kitchen skills, go ahead and delegate those items out to friends and family that will be attending your dinner. People love to help and bring things when you are hosting, so don't feel like you have to do everything yourself unless you're that person that wants to sit around and say, oh, I'm so exhausted, I made everything for Thanksgiving dinner. If you do want to prepare the heart of the meal yourself, you could always ask your guests to bring things like wine or dessert or bread so that they can contribute and help out a little bit, but that main portion of the meal is going to be prepared by you. Another way that you can delegate out some of the food prep is to buy things that are pre-made. There's no harm in doing this, especially if you don't have a big kitchen or you don't have a lot of time to prep. There are even stores that will prepare the entire meal for you. All you do is have to heat and serve. So if just hosting is your thing, you could always check into something like that. My next tip is to schedule out the week before your planned event. Not just the day before or the day of, a week before. Because there's a lot of components that go into hosting a big gathering. You wanna make sure that your house is cleaned, you wanna make sure that you have time to grocery shop for everything that you will be serving, and you may have to do some prep work the day or days before in order to make that cooking day run smoother. So look at your week before, decide what days you're going to clean and grocery shop and prep and go ahead and get those onto your schedule so that you're not running around like crazy on the day of your event. And finally, schedule the day of your event. I personally like to figure out what time we're going to eat and then work backwards from that time to figure out when everything needs to get done. I usually start with the main course. So say again, ham for Easter in a couple of weeks takes 10 minutes per pound at 275 in the oven. And if I wanna eat at three, I need an hour and 40 minutes to heat up that ham. So I'm gonna to wanna to get that ham in the oven by one. So any side dishes that I need to prepare either need to be done and out of the oven by one when the ham goes in, or they need to cook in a relatively short amount of time to go in after that ham is out of the oven. In that situation, what I would probably do is cook the side dishes and then go ahead and warm them back up once that ham comes out of the oven and when it's sitting and just resting for a little bit. So have I inspired you to host a dinner party or a holiday meal? Do you have more questions about how you would organize this process for yourself? If so, please comment below and let me know. I have hosted tons of dinner parties and family gatherings and it is one of my favorite things to do. So I would love to help you out with any challenges that you are having. And don't forget to subscribe so you don't miss any of the organizing and simplifying ideas that I have each week for you and your family here at Simple Solutions Organizing. Take care, happy meal planning, and I will see you next time.